I'd love for you to try something for me right now. Just uh, go around your house somewhere and find about 10 pounds worth of books or potatoes, bricks, dumbbells, anything that you can grab. And if you don't have anything, then you can just imagine as we go along. I just happen to have two Encyclopedia Britannicas from the 1980s. I can't seem to part with them. It's, it's kind of like having Google on paper, except that Reagan is still president. Anyway, they're nice and heavy, and if you found something nice and heavy, then just stand there for a few moments and hold on to them. Maybe, if you want to, you can try hoisting them onto your shoulder. Not so easy. Or on your head. Okay, so let go of all that and just see if you can sense the weight of your head on top of your body. It's very likely that you don't feel your head. I mean, you might feel some tension in the neck and the shoulders. Maybe you blame it on the way you sit or your computer or driving or stress, but most of us don't spend our days walking around feeling our heads. And yet, your head weighs just about as much as these two encyclopedias, between eight and 12 pounds. But we don't feel like we're walking around carrying a couple of bags of sugar all the time. The human body is so brilliantly constructed that when the head sits properly on top of the spine, it feels weightless. Even if it's not exactly on top, you don't necessarily feel its heaviness. What you do feel is the stress you've put on certain muscles to keep your head erect. Muscles like your trapezius, which are designed to tilt your head back, are now at work, trying to make sure your head doesn't lose a battle with gravity. When your head is slightly tilted, right or left, you engage not only the trapezius, but your scalenes and sternocleidomastoids. These muscles designed for movement have been repurposed to support you. No wonder your neck and shoulders feel tense all the time. But what does your head position say to others? And even more importantly, what does it say to you? And how does the position of the head affect the rest of you? Let's take a look at a few ways your head impacts your walk. From introspection to depression, lowering the head compacts the ribs and affects the breath, ultimately the heart. When the head and chest lead, there's no place to go but forward. Tilting your head back can look arrogant and with just a little more degree go to ecstasy. When you tilt your head to the side, you look friendlier, more approachable. But it also makes you look weak, not as powerful, and when you tilt away, you look suspicious. Sitting too long at your computer can pull the head forward, straining the neck muscles and affecting the posture. Walking with the head backwards forces the eyes to open wide, giving you the impression of living in fear. Take a moment right now to check out where your head is. I mean, of course you could do this in the mirror, but believe it or not, you're so used to seeing yourself that you may look straight, even if your head is a little bit forward or off to the side somewhere. Your body habits are often invisible to you. It's kind of like asking a fish what the water's like, but you can learn about the position of your head in a couple of different ways, so we're going to try them now. Stand with your legs comfortably apart underneath your hips. If you can do this with your eyes closed, great. If not, just leave your eyes open and imagine. Picture a plumb line coming from the ceiling and moving right through the center of your body down to the floor with that little weight at the bottom of it, the way contractors use to measure a wall. Notice if you put it in the center of your head or down the middle of your trunk. And now pay attention to where your head is related to the plumb line. So is your head divided in half by the plumb line or is it in front of the plumb line, behind it? 
Continue with your inner vision and notice where your shoulders are. Not just in front or behind, but once you have this straight line, is maybe one shoulder a little bit up or a little bit down? Maybe you have one shoulder in front and the other shoulder behind the plumb line. Just notice. And by the way, sometimes when people do this exercise for the first time, they don't even know where they are in relationship to the plumb line. So don't worry if you're going, I have no idea, that's okay. Continue following that plumb line down through the center of your torso, noticing where your pelvis and belly are in relationship to this plumb line. Also notice your hips. Again, noticing whether one hip feels a little higher than the other or forward. Let your attention travel all the way down until you feel the plumb line in between your two feet. And just notice whether the string is closer to one foot or the other foot. So believe it or not, all of the things that you just noticed are related to the position that you've chosen for your head. And that affects your posture and how you walk. Now we'll take it in another direction. Take a moment to find a space to lie down on the floor on your back. When you lie down on the floor on your back, it's kind of like standing up, except of course you're not having to use your anti-gravity muscles to hold you up. So those muscles can relax and you can get a different idea of how your head relates to the rest of you. So take a moment and notice where does the back of your head touch the floor? Does it feel like it's a little off as if you've got some weird spot in the back of your head and you can't quite center it? Which direction is your chin pointing? Up to the ceiling or down towards your chest? And again, does it feel like it's in the center of your body or does your chin kind of point a little bit down to the right or the left? You don't need to correct anything, you just notice it. And then just let your attention travel down through the rest of yourself, noticing how your shoulder blades contact the floor, where you feel your spine connecting to the floor, how you feel the weight of the back of your pelvis. You might even notice that your heels are touching the floor slightly differently. So how does this all relate to the plumb line? Maybe you can sense that when you're lying down, your hips are different or the same as they were when you were standing. Maybe noticing where your head is on the floor connects up with what you felt when you sensed that plumb line moving through you. These two scans are really useful for giving you information about how you carry yourself when you're vertical. Once you become aware of how you carry your head and how it affects the rest of you, you may want to find some ways to put your head in its proper place. Feldenkrais Awareness Through Movement Lessons are a great stress-free way to reclaim your uprightness. Here's a link to a short lesson for your head. And feel free to explore more once you get there.